we're here, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, second turn with a man that needs no introduction, two-time Indy 500 winner, Alan Jr. Al, thanks for um, always doing stuff when we asked you to do it. I appreciate it. No worries, Aaron. My pleasure. So you haven't actually driven IndyCar for, what, 16, 17 years? Uh, 2007? Something like that. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. 2007. But you are still here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. What keeps you coming back every year? The Indy 500. I mean, it... Uh, greatest spectacle in racing it's the capital racing of the world and uh yeah it's it's the indy 500 that's that's what it's all about absolutely so you know i was watching this interview with tony stewart and i thought it was kind of interesting and i've heard people talk about this before and i know you've been i mean you've been here at the speedway probably more than just about anyone um so he he has this um he did this interview where he said that um it was after the, when he did the double he came back from charlotte he was in the motorhome lot and I guess back then they didn't let a lot of drivers stay in the motorhome lot. Um, and he was just saying when he got back, like, it just the energy and the, and he kind of uses the word paranormal, right? Like, just like all of the energy. And he said he just heard all this noise and he felt like he was going to see someone or something and he saw nothing. And he said it was like it's wild. Like, have you ever experienced anything like that here? Because I've heard a lot of people say stuff like that. Well, the, yeah, the energy here on race day, you yeah. know, is, uh, I, I believe it's generated by, 400,000 people in one area yeah you know it's it's when you think about it you know what shows up here on race day as far as attendance is a small city that comes in on race day morning and then uh, and then leaves race day night you know and and so absolutely. it uh, the energy with all those people is just dynamic yeah absolutely so obviously you like being here like whenever you had like a bad race were you ready just to get out of here, or um, kind of how did you approach that? If you had a well, it's you know if if whenever you have a bad Indy 500, or yeah. you know you have a mechanical and the car breaks and you don't finish the race, the thing that that uh, you think about is it's a whole year before you get to come back. And, and race again and so yeah. you know that's what hurts is right. is it you know it's not in, in a couple months we'll be back here racing again it is a whole year before you get to come back and so uh that's that's what gets you you've always talked about you know you you wanted the I, I read your book and you always talk about like you know winning the 500 was a big deal but the second time was a big deal as well because it was almost like you know it wasn't a fluke like to be a two-time right, winner, right? Right, right, right. The, the second time we won it, it, uh, it proved that the first one, uh, you know, we were we were lucky on both of them, yeah. you know. And uh, but, you know, when you when you win it multiple times, it uh, it's very gratifying. So in '94, you guys had the beast. Um, was there any point during the race in which you think thought that the beast wasn't going to make it the full 500 miles? The whole race. Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it was an experimental engine. It was yeah. its very first race, and uh, and so yeah, I mean, the the reliability factor was was definitely on everybody's mind. How many of those engines did you guys go through that year? We went through quite a few getting it ready for the Indy 500. You know, we did all of our testing at Michigan, and and I truly felt that if we could make it live for 500 miles at Michigan, uh, then we'd 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 be real good at, at Indy because Michigan, you just use so much more throttle, right, all the time, and and uh, with because of the banking, and so uh, yeah, Indy you, you lift quite a bit, and it and gives a the engine a able to to breathe and so yeah um so obviously both of your indie wins mean a lot to you what is there another win that you would say what, what besides indie wins what win means the most to you well i guess you know the, the the second most popular race on the circuit is long beach right and so uh you know its popularity it uh it's it's a very popular race, and so yeah, that's the that's the one you want to win after after the 500. And you won like what three or four in a row? We won four in a row, and then a total of six. Right. Yeah. Um, so there's something that um, so my co so we had you on the podcast like two years ago via Zoom, um, and what we usually do like the bigger name drivers like yourself is we have a list of about four or five drivers that you raced against, and we ask. 
you know, talk a little bit about racing against them if you have a story or whatever. And for some reason, we didn't do it with you. I don't know why, so I just have a short list here. Um, and if you can just talk a little bit about what it was like to, to race these people. You already see the, you already see the list. I've seen the list, yeah. <laughs> All right, so first one, Michael Andretti. Um, great, great person. Great, uh, if, if, anybody, if anybody was my direct contemporary, it was Michael. And so uh, we grew up together, and we raced together. We raced each other hard, but we did it clean, cleanly. And, and so, uh, you know, just simply put, racing against Michael made me a better race car driver. So and if we talk about Michael, we have to talk about his dad, Mario. Yeah, Mario, same thing. Mario is, is a legend and an idol of mine, and uh, I, I, I pretty much concentrated on on Mario paying attention where he was during practice uh, at every race so that I could uh, learn from him and Nigel Mansell Nigel was was in IndyCars for a very brief time um, once he got the hang of the ovals yes. he was he was unstoppable he was a very talented driver someone that you've said that was your favorite teammate Bobby Rahal yep uh, Bobby was uh, just a class guy. What can I say? I mean, we, 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 he, we shared information more than any other teammate that I ever had. And, uh, and so, yeah, it was, it was great uh, racing with him. For, for some reason, he would be my closest friend, best friend, as far as drivers are concerned with. And what about him? Do you, I mean, you, you think he kind of helped you become a better driver? Like, what do you think he kind of did to help you become a better his driver? His setup on his car. <laughs> I used it a lot. Okay, I used it sense. a lot, yeah. yeah. Um, and then Paul Tracy. We got to talk Paul about Paul Tracy. Tracy. Uh, Paul's just, just one of those guys that he's super fast, okay? But then um, he would uncork himself, you know? He would... He would uh, <laughs> make mistakes that uh that that kind of uh it was really surprising because of how fast he actually was how talented he actually is and then to make the, the mistakes running into people that that he does it's uh it's an anomaly actually right i think i saw on youtube a couple weeks ago it came up um, i think it was michigan 1990 Two, I believe, where you went up to him afterwards. I don't know what he, he was doing something, and you weren't too happy with him. Yeah, well, we were we were laps down, and uh, I think he was running third, and it was just near the end of the race, and we were we at that time I was quicker than he was, and so I was gonna pass him, and he tried to block me when I'm laps down. It wasn't for position or anything like that, and so it 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 surprised me, and uh, like I said super quick guy yeah. okay and then just do a stupid thing out there it just it, it it's truly is an anomaly he is yep so last one on the list i think we have to include your father big al yep yep dad was uh i think my uncle bobby said it best about my dad and that is the longer the race the better driver he became and so he had great success on all the 500 mile races which yeah. is our longest races and uh he was he was unbeatable when uh when the car was right he was just totally unbeatable so i think we have to ask um obviously you never raced against your uncle bobby but um do, do you have a bobby under story that kind of sticks out that we can actually tell yeah <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, uh, Uncle Bobby was just a unique guy. They broke the mold when uh, when they made him. He was a very outgoing guy, and 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 he would tell you like it is. I mean, he he didn't hold any punches or, or hide anything. What what you see is what you got with Uncle Bobby. I think the best story I've ever heard was the turkey story, which you've heard that he was a. Kroger and he used to walk around yeah. with a turkey. <laughs> I don't know if it's I don't true, know but if that's so true. But uh, but he made it sound good. So um, so when you look at you know racing today, kind of what what are your thoughts on the racing today? Obviously, like I mean, it's, it's good racing. Um, but I mean, you know, just, what, what, I guess just what do you think about the IndyCar racing today? I think IndyCar's on the on the upswing. I think it's gaining in popularity. Um, you know, with, with RP at the helm, it's just going to, in my, my belief, is just going to get better and better and better. And, and so, um, 
you know the split definitely hurt yeah. its popularity but uh but it's coming back it's 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 good it's great racing and the drivers all are talented they're they're setting records right and left you know rewriting the record book basically with willpower and yeah. on on how many poles he's got scott dixon hit wins and championships and all that kind of stuff so it's a very unique time to uh to see these legends rewriting the record book it's i think it's awesome and you know something a lot of people express concern about is like just the marketing aspect like how do you think the sport can be marketed better because like tv ratings have gone down a little bit yeah i don't I, actually aaron i i don't know you right. know they're they're uh they're they're trying their hardest indycar is 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 really you know trying to get think outside the box which is with all the technology you know the simulators and all that kind of stuff yeah. with with young race fans you know they 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 can do their own racing and so um you know it, it's just the thing that that they just need to do different things to uh to gain interest and i, I mean i think the overall just the concept of the sport has changed as far as you know back in the 2005 2006 it was mostly ovals so it was a whole different you know crowd of racers now it seems like indycar has kind of become a playground for like former f1 guys f2 guys f3 guys um and in a way i mean that's kind of how it was you know before the split right yeah it definitely was you know it was with with emerson yeah. and nigel coming over you know uh f1 world champions that sort of thing and so uh it just shows how how strong indycar racing is and and how it's watched worldwide yeah. you know i mean uh it's it's one of those series that it's very unique it's the only race car the only the, the only race car that runs a super speedway a short oval uh temporary road course and then your 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 uh main road courses and so it uh uh it's the only car that, that that can do that that kind of versatility and you know a big thing with racing that's changed in indycar racing is obviously the safety but i mean if you look at it you know from 60s to 80s i mean it, it's all you know a lot of drivers have told us like it's you know people are like oh how could you dr drive a car in 1992 like it, it wasn't safe but back then it was the it safest was the car safest you knew right thing out there yeah you yeah, probably yeah. felt so, like man this is safe right it, yeah absolutely yeah and and as technology goes on yeah. the cars are going to get safer and safer and right. safer you know so uh, and and I see you know in the future I don't know how how soon but they're going to start breaking track records out here again you know with uh with the speed and all that kind of stuff as long as that the technology of safety matches the technology of speed then you can go faster and faster and faster so yeah what was do, do you remember what what was your fastest speed ever here uh 228 average oh, okay. and then with um with the push rod engine we went like 245 down the straightaways oh wow so, that's crazy yeah I can't even imagine going into the first turn. <laughs> I was going to ask about the aero screen. So, what well, what was your initial thought about the aero screen? I mean, a lot of people didn't like it, but obviously, I think it's safe to say, like you know, the Dixon crash. I forget when that was with Howard. Um, like I, he, I, yeah, I don't know if he, he would have survived that one. That was pretty, and I think the aero screen definitely saved him on that. Yeah, I think definitely the aero screen is 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 a very strong positive yeah. okay for for any kind of debris coming off and and cars and that sort of thing and so uh as a driver i would have hated it because yeah. it's so hot you know with without any air blowing on you and so they've they've kind of um have addressed that issue and and so uh but yeah the safety aspect of it is far far more than uh than the uncomfort of the driver so right the um i mean the cooling i mean it seems like they're they're doing more with like i see some of the drivers now have like the cool vests um yeah, yeah. and that was probably they didn't have anything like that when you raced did they no well no because we, we had an open cockpit so, right so the air cooled us down so right well i i appreciate you taking the time to to talk to me and um i will mention i have race 92 alan Sir jr shirt on so if you're looking for any alan Sir jr merchandise hey, i need to show you my new favorite t-shirt Yep, we, right here. and then show the back. And then the back with all of our signatures. Yep, so, three answers. Um, yep, yep. 
Great t-shirt. Yep. Thank you.